All right, YouTube, I am extremely nervous about this video. <laughs> and not for the reasons you might think, but I am doing a little bit of an experiment in this video where I do not stop rolling and I don't stop to cut it. Um, ah, ah, we're going to be talking about how I overcame depression. And the reason we're doing this in this format is because I... Well, you know, I just want to experiment with different video types, and also I think I have a little bit of an inherent um, perfectionism, <laughs> right? So I, I can already feel myself ah, wanting to edit the heck out of what I'm saying now, but no, we're not doing that. We're just going to get started with the material. So, how I overcame depression. Yeah. I mean, I think any of you guys who really followed my channel back like, three, four, or five years ago could see I was going through a funk at that time. You know, if you were paying attention. <laughs> you know, I think it's easy to mask it a little bit on camera. Um, but no, there was definitely a period where I was very, very uh, unhappy. And I would say there was a period specifically of about two months where I was severely depressed and that's, I don't say that because I like went to a doctor and they were like, you're severely depressed and they labeled me with it. But no, I say like I was severely depressed for at least two months because for those two months I couldn't get off the bed. Um, yeah, I would just like, also sorry, this, um, this whole not being able to edit myself thing is like, woo, <laughs> it gets ya. Cause I know I'm performing for you, but I'm trying to talk to you like you're a friend. So, okay, <laughs> out of performance mode and into friend mode. Um, yeah, no, so there was a period of two months in my life where I couldn't get off the bed. And when I say that, what I mean is like, it was difficult for me to even want to go to the bathroom or get up and eat food or blah 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 and this is when I was back in Germany living with my ex um and I don't know how many of you have ever been in a situation like that where you literally are so void of feeling oh my gosh I'm not even timing how long this is ah she doesn't know how to do this because she's never done it before. All right, it's going to be a 30-minute talk. Ah! No, I can't press the stop button. Okay, okay, okay. Experiment. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, there was um, a two-month period where I couldn't get off the bed. And I don't know if you've ever been in that mindset before, but it was really freaking difficult to get out of. Um, because when you can't even find the energy to go to the bathroom, it is hard to find the energy to do anything to lift your mindset out of that point. So I have a whole list of stuff I wrote down months ago about how I actually fought that depression and got out of it. And I'm just going to go through those and let the conversation go where it may. Oh, and the reason why we're doing this experiment video also, by the way, is because I saw Wheezy Waiter do it. And I'm like, if he can do it, I can do it. So first way. I got out of this uh, depression was I was able to envision a different life for myself. And what I mean by that is that, can I press the stop button? I'm going to press it. I'm going to press it. Ah, well, y'all four minutes in and I already failed the experiment. <laughs> I mean, I, oh my gosh. Ah, luckily this is about growth. Um, apparently Wheezy Waiter can do it better than me. Uh, but no, but one thing I realized that I didn't say was that the reason why I was so depressed is because I was in a different country, I wasn't doing a great job at adapting, I was in a relationship that was, you know, headed downhill very fast. Um, and three, I was like struggling with my YouTube channel. Like even though it was taking off views wise, I was just, um, seeing that I couldn't get the videos that I wanted to take off to take off and I started to feel trapped and I felt so lonely because we filmed these YouTube videos by ourselves. I mean, it was just like all the conditions were right for me to feel terrible and I did. I felt really, really bad. Yeah, and so step one of how I got out of things was I was able to envision a different life and the really crazy thing about this, and it's going to sound super elitist, so, you know, prepare yourself, but um, it was actually 
<laughs> one of my old Harvard friends and his birthday party that helped me out of this situation. And I don't even know if he knows how influential his birthday party was on my life. Um, but luckily, I have very well-connected rich friends, and this one wanted to throw a birthday party in Italy, in a castle in Italy, uh, for like 60 of his closest friends. <laughs> and because I was living in Munich at that time, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll come. Um, and I didn't know it was gonna be 60 people. I, I was actually very honored. I thought he was gonna invite like six friends, you know? And then when I got there and saw what a massive event it was, I was like, whoa, this is insane. Because for three days and nights, uh, not only did they feed us and provide alcohol for us, but they also like housed us and like bust us from place to place, right? So it was like three days of straight partying. And the thing that was so amazing about this party was that the people my friend invited were just amazing, right? So it was like a lot of our old Harvard friends who were doing crazy things in the world. Like one was Selena Gomez's cameraman. Uh, another guy had won a gold medal for skiing at the Olympics. And then like, here I was, my channel was growing at the time. And it was just, it was so, like what a wild collection of people. And for somebody who couldn't get off the bed for two months to go from that life where every day was like, depressing to stepping into this world where like everything was glitz, glamour, amazing, could be a headline, people are beautiful. I mean, it was like, it was like I was reminded of the life I want. And I was also reminded of the life I came from because, you know, a thing that's inherent to me now, a part of my identity is that like, I am a Harvard woman. Right? And that, that changes you when you get that level of um, connection and exposure, right? And this party reminded me of where I came from. And it was like, hey, 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 this amazing life you're destined for, that's who you are. Not the person who's been depressed on the bed for the last two months. And I, when I say I was depressed for two months, I don't mean that it was two months and over. I mean, like, it, it was like years of my life I was sad, um, but two months where it got to the point where I couldn't get up because of my sadness. And so I really think it was that ability to re-envision what my life could be that really helped me make the decision to ch change things. Um, because I remember there was a bench in Rome. This was actually, I might go back to that bench one day. I remember there was like a bench in Rome in some random park that I sat down on and I had to like sit there and make the hardest decision of my life. I was like, I have to change everything. Like I have to, I have to break up with my ex. I have to go back to the States. I'm like, I just wanted everything to change. And it was there that I made the decision that I was going to start trying again and I was going to do things differently. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the first step of how I did it. Um, and the reason why I chose New York City in particular out of all the cities is because of what this city stands for, right? It's the place where like, if you can make it here, you'll make it anywhere. And so because I didn't have the motivation in and within myself, I wanted to co-opt the motivation of a city and the motivation of hundreds of thousands of people who have come, millions who have come before me to this city and live off of that energy. Whew. Whew. And so um, it, one thing I wrote on, on the notes is that like, you know, sometimes all you need is one book, one YouTube video, or one line from one verse of one song to see that there's something better for yourself. Um, and that was so true. Okay, woo! <laughs> woo, hello tears! Oh, feast off my tears, YouTube. <laughs> Why don't ya? Uh, but that's fine. Tears are as natural as like sneezing. Um, okay, the second thing I have for how I fought depression is I got off the bed <laughs> and that sounds super simple, stupid, but what, what did I say about that? 
Um, what did I say about that? Perspective. Literally anything I do right now will be a win in comparison to laying here all day. I had to somehow adopt that mindset. Like, if I get up, it'll be a bonus. It'll be like I succeeded. Even if I wasn't amazing, even if I didn't go out and conquer the world in one day, I thought, if I can get up off this bed, I will have won. Um, and a big part of how I did that, other than just that perspective and that grace I offered myself, but a big part of how I did that is I would watch motivational videos online. So think like, Tony Robbins, think Les Brown, think whatever, because sometimes the only person who's going to be speaking a positive, optimistic thought into your mind is somebody else, especially when your mind is in a very, very, very dark place. Um, now, the thing I remember about listening to all those Tony Robbins things is that I had to be really careful to not just take in the motivation, but be careful not to like buy in to the whole system, right? Because Tony Robbins, he's an amazing motivator, but like, y you know, those um, motivation coaches are also amazing salespeople. And so if you're not careful, you could just be shelling out thousands of dollars to get none of the results, but just keep being fed motivation that's not helping you. And I'm gonna be honest, I uh, did end up <laughs> in one of those like, whatchamacallit pyramid scheme things. And I spent way more money than I want to admit on here, but just think in the realm of thousands of dollars, not for a Tony Robbins thing, uh, but for another program called Clients on Demand. So that was like two years ago where I was trying to sell my Ivy Advice course. And I just entered everything online, like how to, how to grow a business, how to grow a course, how to sell a course, how to blah, blah, blah. And I ended up on a phone call with somebody who was selling me really well. And I thought, wow, if they could sell me really well, then they know something to teach me about how to sell stuff really well. <laughs> and so I shelled out thousands of dollars to get them to teach me how to do it. But a lesson that I learned is just because someone knows how to sell you really well doesn't mean they know how to tell you really well. It's not that what that client on demand program was teaching me wasn't helpful. I did learn things, but I do not think it was worth the value that they made it, right? So just because someone's an amazing salesperson doesn't mean they're an amazing teacher. Um, and just because somebody's able to motivate you into doing something uh, doesn't mean it's always a good idea to pay out cash to get them to tell you other things. So, blah, coming back to the discussion, <laughs> I do think... Uh, I do think it's important to listen to other people telling you you can do stuff even when you aren't telling that you're telling yourself that um, And another way I got off of the bed. Oh, I wrote it on here is incentives um, The own like one of the few things that could get me off the bed is if I scheduled foot massages um I know it sounds stupid and I know it sounds dumb and it was also very hard for me back then because money was a big thing I was concerned about back then. Um, so I didn't want to shell out more money, but I had it in my head where it's like, if you can pay $40 to go out and have someone massage your feet and that gets you off the bed, do it. Because I would rather pay that money and get you off the bed than save that money for a day and have you just waste hours and hours here. When I say you, I mean me. This was me talking to myself because that's pretty much what like depression is, is a big game of which voice inside your head is winning? <laughs> which dog do you feed? <laughs> woof, woof. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the third little thing I had written on here is that in order to get over depression, I had to cut the crap. And what I mean by that is I had to cut out everything, and I mean everything that was causing me pain. What, it was difficult for me to live in Germany because I didn't speak the language? Okay, cut it out, come back to the States, speak English. Um, I had a boyfriend who I loved very, very deeply, um, but who I was also feeling a tremendous amount of pain from. It had to go. He had to go. Like, I was cutting out anything that was painful, even if it came with big promises of joy. Um, 
And those were some of the very, very difficult decisions that I had to make because it's not, I mean, those are two of the most traumatizing things, moving your life and ending a relationship. Like, geez, geez, you know, and I was doing them all at once. Um, and I came to a city where I had very little support structure, but it's better to be in a place that's neutral than to be in a place that's hurting you. Okay. 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 Yeah, like, honestly, sometimes I think it's even better, like, you know, just turn everything off. Maybe even go, like, camp or something. It, you know, just, just make it so that you have no big pains, definitely, but even the small pains, you know? And talking about the big pains, like, it was very, very important to myself that I put myself in a place where financially, I still kn knew I was going to be okay. So like the apartment I'm living in right now, I mean, it's, it's cheap by New York standards, right? I live in basically a shoebox, but I'm only paying $800 a month to live here in a city where most rent is, you know, 1500 or above. So take the ego cut you know, and put yourself in a place where you have the time, the space, the whatever to lie down, you know, and have everything, you know, and just be able to process. Man, I like this. I like doing the video in this style, especially this type of video, because I feel like it's really the only way this type of video should be done. Like I wouldn't really feel right if I made a video about overcoming depression and it was like splicing it up into three minutes full of jokes and like, here's how I did it. Ah. No, I like, I like talking to you like you're a friend right there in front of me. It's just rough because you can't respond, but. <sighs> Awkward. <laughs> just kidding. Um, okay. Another way I got over uh, this, and honestly, if you're listening to all this and you are in a place where, where you mentally can't see anything good or any positive reason to move or take action on something, don't listen to all these things that I'm telling you about how to overcome this. Don't listen to all of them. It, it's overwhelming. I get it. Just pick one. Just pick one that works for you. And if I had to suggest one that works the best for me, and I think I was gonna get to it later on, but whatever, I'll get to it now. The best tip I could recommend for getting over depression is to reflect on your life on a consistent basis and make 1% changes, right? So I did that with my life, but on a weekly basis. So once a week, I would do a reflection and say, how did this week go? What did I fail on that I wanted to succeed at? And what do I want to do better? And then I would make that my hypothesis, uh, make a hypothesis for how I could change that. And then I would try that thing the next week. And if it worked, I would keep it. If it didn't, I would throw it out and try something new. And I actually had an accountability partner for about a year and a half. Uh, just one of my friends from school who, yeah, him and I would get together every Sunday just for an hour. And I'd be like, what did you do? What did you do? Blah. And he would be like, what do you do? Blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, and that was, that was how I was able to do the reflections even before I myself was um, strong enough, you know, to, to, to keep up that system on my own. Um, and the reason why the 1% changes is important is because it's not just 1% changes, it's 1% positive cumulative changes. Right? So I don't know if you've read the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. I haven't, <laughs> but, but I read the first chapter and that was enough for me to understand <laughs> at least one of the central points, which was basically that like, you know, he says, if you take the number one and you increase it by 1% every day for an entire year, you end up with like the number 37 at the end. So 37 times higher or better. Um, and if you take the number one and decrease it by 1% every day for an entire year, you end up almost at zero, right? So the idea is if you do this in your real life, um, as close as you can, you could be 37 times better off by the end of the year. And so these cumulative changes I'm talking about are like, 
If I'm going from a place where I can't get off the bed, if I can make a little change in my life where one day I can get off the bed because I put it on my schedule to go get my Monday foot massage, boom, I just made a 1% improvement to my life. Or, oh, when I was living here in New York, I was having a very difficult time feeding myself appropriately. Like I was always hungry because there's a communal kitchen for everyone in this building, but I don't like cooking there because it's dark, it's loud, it's uncomfortable, you know? And who likes standing in the kitchen for an hour? I don't. And so all I had was a microwave and a mini fridge and that wasn't enough. So I thought, you know what? Let me buy a toaster. Uh, let me get a hot plate and let me get a rice cooker. And all of a sudden my ability to like nourish myself changed just by these three 1% changes, these three items I purchased, right? And this is what I mean, 1% positive cumulative changes. So one thing that you change once and boom, life's better because of it. All right, all right, all right, all right. So top tip, if you had to pick one thing, it's the reflections and 1% changes. Now, another thing that really helped me though was focusing on, what did I even say? Oh, pick a priority, right? So essentially what I did is I wrote down which areas of my life I wanted to improve. And really there are only like five or six, right? You have like your body, your mental health, you know, so your body's like how you feed it, how you exercise, your mental health, how you're talking to yourself. Are you getting therapy? Uh, you got your career and your finances. You got your passions, blah, blah, blah. Some people like spiritual life, you know, not for me personally, but whatever. And so... I, for two years, basically put my career on the back burner because I said, you know what? It's more important for me to get my body back into the state that it was and to build up good relationships because I felt like if I could do those two things, I'd have a solid foundation for everything else. And the reason it was so important for me to have my body where I wanted it is because I strongly believe... Um, that the way we treat ourselves is a positive feedback loop, right? So like when you're looking in a mirror <laughs> and you see somebody who looks strong, you're gonna think, oh, I am somebody who is strong, right? And it's very hard to convince yourself of that mindset if what you're seeing in the mirror doesn't reflect that. So that's why over the course of two years, I really worked to put on 15 pounds of muscle before I even thought about improving my YouTube channel, improving my career. And then the second thing why I decided to prioritize relationships was because I realized that the quality of words coming into your head and the quality of actions being done to you also affect the way that you think about yourself, right? And so if you have friends who are telling you you're crazy or, and this is something a friend in New York actually told me once, um, he said, you know what, Taylor? I think you're average looking. And whatever the fuck that might, that might be true for him, but I don't need to hear anything negative about myself when I'm trying to build myself up. So I got rid of that friend. <laughs> you know what I mean? But people won't just tell you stuff about your looks. They'll, they'll tell you stuff about like, you're not that smart or you, you're a loser. Or how do you think you could accomplish that? Or, oh, I don't know if you could really, yeah, do that, do that thing. I don't, you're stretching yourself to, no, no. All of that, out. I was working on building up the best friendships I could with the best friends I could find. And that does require a lot of judgment. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I accept that <laughs> about the ability to filter. But um, for me, I felt it was necessary at that time because the way people were speaking to me is what I was taking in about myself. Because I had, when I was depressed and also when I was in my relationship my, with my ex, I had lost a lot of my own intuition to know what felt good, what didn't. It felt like any move I made would have been a move in the wrong direction. Um, so I just had to keep taking little steps forward with positive people until I could eventually get that intuition back. Does anybody else feel like bored of my voice or is that just me? Is that just me? Am I just 
talking to Lynn. I only have like five minutes left, but I have so much more to say. You know what? Even if this video goes over 30 minutes, I'm still, I'm still going to say what I have to say. The next thing I did to get out of therapy, oh, to get out of therapy, whoops, I spoiled it. <laughs> to get out of a depression is I got therapy. <laughs> and I wasn't making, planning on making this video sponsored, but since I'm bringing it up, yeah, better help. Better help wasn't what I started with. I started, but I am a sponsor of theirs, and I am gonna link them down below. Um, <laughs> I actually started with a couples therapist back in Munich, and then she became my individual therapist. And then when I moved here, I got another therapist, uh, like a separate therapist, uh, not a separate, they became my primary therapist, and I got them through healthcare. And then my healthcare changed, and so then I had to get another therapist through healthcare. And then BetterHelp also offered me a therapist for a little while, um, for like three months free to test it to see if I'd want to be a sponsor. And Be BetterHelp therapy was actually like so good that after the three months ended, I was like, uh, I'm going to need to pay for this because I like it. So I still pay for better help therapy and uh, <laughs> that's why I can definitely say it is something worth doing. And if you're not a customer of theirs, highly consider it. Again, I will link my link down below. Okay, that's enough of the sponsor. That's enough of the selling out yes for now. <laughs> um, no, but it's funny. So now I have two therapists. Uh, my better help therapist I use for career therapy which is just as real therapy because I definitely have cried in that. And then my therapist that I get through my health insurance is my relationship therapist. And I can proudly say that with the relationship therapy, I almost, I'm almost like bored with it now because I've, I've kind of solved a lot of the interrelationship problems I was having. Took me like a good two years, but yeah, now, now it's just almost to a point where I, show up to therapy and I'm like, yeah, my life's kind of boring now. Um, could, could, could we, maybe we could talk about bouldering and, and why I'm scared of attempting that problem. Right? And so I'll repurpose uh, him and that therapist for, you know, those purposes. Okay. Okay, okay. Oh, I already told you about this system. So we don't even need to, maybe I will get done in 30 minutes. Look at me. Yeah, and then one of the last things I did to overcome that mindset, to, to go from the person who was laying on the bed to the person I am now who can get off the bed anytime I want. You're like, you're still standing on the bed, yes or no? Um, but one of the last things I did was I started to tell myself better stories about the world because that's all really your mental health is, is what stories do you repeatedly tell yourself over and 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 over again. Um, and you know, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm somebody who's like theoretically believes that nothing matters. <laughs> and if I, if I believe that, and I'm also somebody who believes there's no such thing as good or evil, there's no right mindset. And so if I believe that, you know, I, 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 I might as well just choose which mindset feels the best and start conditioning myself into that mindset. And so that's what I do. I, I choose whichever mindset I think is gonna get me my goals and I worked, work to adopt that belief. So if there's something that's making me sad right now, like I feel like I'm not um, inherently interesting enough to just talk to you, without editing out everything I say. I force myself to sit down in front of the camera and not stop the video and not edit it. I put myself through little trials and tribulations, whatever, to keep practicing that I knew, new identity that I want. Whew, yeah, sounds strong. <laughs> I feel like a whew, strong, independent woman when I say that. Mmm, mmm, yeah. Mm. And, uh, oh, this one was interesting. So, uh, probably perhaps the biggest mindset that I could have adopted 
back then that I did adopt was I used to think, um, okay, yeah, maybe my life's not going perfectly. Maybe doing this next thing won't be the thing that changes everything. But I would always counter that with, but what's the alternative? Right? Because you can sit in one place for your entire life if you want to. Right? You can lay on a bed for your entire life if you want to, but you could honestly, you could ruin a life by sitting still. Right? And, and that wasn't the life that I wanted to lead. Man, now the, now the refrigerator's running. I've got to go catch it. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. <laughs> and this is about to go off. I got 10 seconds left, so I'll just, uh, I'll finish up my thoughts. But yeah, but I just, like, what, it, what is the alternative? Yeah, maybe going for that run won't make you fit. But what's the alternative? You stay still? Yeah, maybe applying for that job, you won't get it. But what's the alternative? You do nothing? Yeah, maybe um, going out, meeting people, you won't find the f friend of your love of your life or friends that you want to be with forever. But what is the alternative? What is the alternative? Ruin your life by sitting still? No. No, I tried that. It sucks. It really sucks. So even though it might suck to go and try and fail, it sucks worse to sit still and fail. Yeah, I'm very confident, confident about. <laughs> but yeah. Hmm. And so where am I now? Where am I now? I'm still on my bed. <laughs> I'm just but I, I'm in such a better mind space. I mean, it's so interesting. I kind of want to make a video for you guys because I'm in a place where I almost don't really care about finding a partner anymore, which I know hasn't been what I've said in past videos, but that's because things are changing. Um, I'm in a place where I'm 15 pounds heavier, muscle wise, wise way, muscle, muscle mass wise, <laughs> than I was two years ago. I'm in a place where my friendships, I have them now. <laughs> I mean, the first part was COVID because I can't really blame myself for not having friends during COVID, but I have amazing friendships now. Um, I got a job three days ago that pays well and that's exciting and that's helping me try new stuff out on here. I mean, every month just has been better than the month before. And sometimes when I think about it and I think about how hard I've worked to change my life in the past two slash almost three years, um, I really get proud. Yeah. But it's, it's all just rinse, wash, repeat, really, you know? Reflect on your life, see what's working, what's not working, try something different the next week, or keep doing what's working the next week if it's working. And rinse, wash, repeat, rinse, wash, repeat, rinse, wash, repeat. And I've been doing that, yeah, you now for two or three years, and I'm absolutely positive that in 10 years, you know, <laughs> you know, forgetting some maybe like outside circumstance that might happen, but, um, you know, given that that doesn't happen, my, I'm pretty confident my life's going to be pretty amazing if you give me that much time. So, yeah, that's how, uh, that's how I overcame a deep depression. <laughs> Caused by a little bit of college graduation. Oh, well, that time the camera stopped me automatically. So I guess I should say goodbye. That is how I finished. Uh, that, that is how I got over my depression that was caused by you know, being sad after graduation, being disillusioned. And if you took something out of it, I, um, I'm happy. All right. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.